Hi everyone, I'm Adam Harrison from Learn Your Land. It's the beginning of September and we're approaching the full harvest moon, which means that summer is slowly transitioning into autumn. Now many people lament these final days of summer, unless you're a mushroom hunter, in which case you're getting really excited because autumn is such a great time to get out and look for a few choice edible mushrooms, including this one right here. So this is Latoporus sulfurius, commonly known as chicken of the woods, chicken mushroom sulfur shelf. It's a saprophytic fungus which decomposes dead or decaying organic material. There are quite a few species in the United States. Here in Pennsylvania, we really see a lot of Latopor sulfurius. There's also Latopor cincinnatus, which is characterized by having lighter hues of whites and pinks. And there's also one that grows on conifers, Latopor conifericola. For this video, we're going to focus on Latopor sulfurius because it's the one that I'm most familiar with. It's the one that I most frequently see here in Pennsylvania. Now, this is one of the easiest mushrooms in the forest to identify. If you are a novice mushroom hunter, if you're just getting into this, this might be one worth focusing on, at least in the beginning. If you spend any time in the woods hiking, backpacking, especially this time of year, September, October, you have to work really hard not to find this mushroom. You could see it even at a distance. It has an unmistakable yellow-orange color, and it grows in shelf-like clusters on standing or fallen wood. And so some of this wood has fallen maybe this year. You won't see it possibly that year, but give it some time, maybe the year after or year after that or the following year. It really likes well decomposed logs. And it tends to fruit in the same area year after year, so keep checking your spots. Now a key identifying characteristic is its underside. It's yellow and it doesn't contain gills. It contains thousands of tiny microscopic pores. And these pores, their role is to release spores. This is how it reproduces. So this is a polypore mushroom. It's in the polypore family, kind of like turkey tail or reishi. But unlike those mushrooms, this one's much softer, much more pliable. And that's what makes it a good choice edible mushroom. And what's unique is that I don't think this mushroom really requires a lot of rain to fruit. We haven't had a lot of rain these past few weeks. And even in past years when we don't have a lot of rain, you could still find this mushroom in the woods. Now, there aren't too many look-alikes to this mushroom. However, it could be confused for maybe two species, if you stretch your imagination. Perhaps chanterelles, chanterelles are orange, kind of like chicken mushroom, but if you flip chanterelles upside down, they don't have pores. They don't even have gills, they have something called ridges. But chanterelles grow on the ground, not on wood, not in shelf-like clusters. But chanterelles are choice edible mushrooms anyway, and if you harvest those, well, that's a very tasty mistake to make. Unlike the next one, which is jack-o'-lantern. You don't want to confuse it for a jack-o'-lantern, at least if you're considering eating it, because jack-o'-lanterns are poisonous, they're toxic. And if you consume it, you're going to have a rough next couple of days. It acts as a violent purgative. To distinguish the two, flip jack-o'-lanterns upside down, and they have gills on the underside, not pores. They have gills on the underside, and they grow in dense clusters. And another cool characteristic about jack-o'-lanterns is that they are bioluminescent, which means they have the ability to glow in the dark. So if your mushroom grows in shelf-like clusters on standing or fallen wood, it's yellow and orange, and the underside has thousands of tiny microscopic pores, chances are you have chicken of the woods. Now before we focus on edibility, what I really want to focus on are the medicinal properties. You know, many people talk about chaga and reishi and turkey tail, maitake, and birch polypore, and so on for medicinal mushrooms. And this one doesn't really get a lot of attention. However, after digging through the research, this one should definitely be considered a medicinal mushroom. There have been several studies on chicken of the woods, especially this year, 2015. For example, a brand new study just came out showing that a particular triterpene compound known as acetyl eburicoic acid possesses strong anti-inflammatory properties in a dose-dependent manner, meaning that the more that it is ingested, the stronger the anti-inflammatory properties are exhibited. And it works by inhibiting COX-2 enzyme. Now, COX-2 enzyme is responsible for the inflammatory cascade in the body. And a lot of prescription medications that deal with inflammation are COX-2 inhibitors. So perhaps chicken of the woods, or at least this compound, acetyl eburicoic acid, could act as a viable alternative to some of these really nasty prescription medications out there. Another study from 2015 has shown that a particular lipid extract from chicken of the woods demonstrates potent antibacterial and antifungal properties. So lipid would be a nonpolar extract or fat extract, definitely not water. It needs a nonpolar solvent to pull it out, but antibacterial and antifungal. And another study has shown that this is so high in antioxidants, very high in antioxidants, including chlorogenic acid, kemphorol, and quercetin. 
And you can tell this is high in quercetin because of its color. Quercetin is a yellowish pigment, and of course the underside's yellow. It's got some orange in it as well. Quercetin is one of the most well-researched antioxidants out there. But not only that, it's a well-researched anti-allergenic compound, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial as well. So if you're looking to develop a medicinal strategy based on the wild organisms of your ecosystem, perhaps consider using chicken of the woods as well in addition to some of the other plants and fungi out there. Now of course chicken of the woods is a choice edible mushroom. Many people know it and love it as such and it has a flavor reminiscent of chicken. And I encourage you to harvest it when it's young. Now it doesn't have to be a little nub growing from a tree. You can let it grow a little bit but the longer that you wait the less likely that it will be available because somebody or some animal might beat you to it. And definitely cook the whole thing. You don't want to eat it raw. It can cause digestive upset in some individuals, even if it's undercooked. So thoroughly cook it. As it gets a little older, it tends to get a little buggier and a little too tough to consume. The chitin really builds up. Chitin's the fungal cell membrane molecule that gives it that tough texture. You can still harvest maybe some of these outer portions of it. That might be the most tender. As you move towards the core, it gets a little too tough, a little too chitinous. However, you could harvest that. You could throw that in soup stocks, make a nice soup stock out of it. You can make infusions or even tinctures out of it as well. I like to cook this maybe 10-15 minutes, a little bit of butter or olive oil, saute it, add some red wine at the end, let that cook off, and I've got a great dinner ahead of me whenever I prepare it like that. Thanks so much for watching this video, really appreciate it. I encourage you to get out and look for chicken of the woods this time of year. Even if you're not interested in harvesting it for food or for medicine, it's still a great species to appreciate just because of its color. It's not every day you see something that's so bright orange and yellow in nature. And it really has the ability and the power to brighten your day, literally, metaphorically, and metaphysically speaking. I also encourage you to check out learnyourland.com. It's a database and community of naturalists, nature clubs, nature organizations in the northeastern United States, slowly making its way out west to the entire country. And you can easily follow naturalists in your area, learn when these wildflower walks are happening, mushroom forays, foraging workshops, tree identification classes, and a lot more. And you can join the community by hitting the join button at the top, and you can stay updated that way. I'd also really love it if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you can stay updated whenever I release videos. And I have a lot of videos that are in the pipeline that I plan on sharing with all of you related to the flora, the fauna, and the fungi of our beautiful earth. So thanks so much for doing that. Thanks again for watching this video. Happy mushroom hunting, and I'll see you in the next video.